Welcome to episode number 12 of the Nourish to Flourish podcast. Today we're going to talk about the 77 Day Nourish Challenge, what it's all about, how it's been going, and how I came up with the idea for the challenge. So let's get started. Welcome to the Nourish to Flourish podcast. My name is Suzanne Jezek Ariaga, and I'm your host. I'm a holistic mindset coach, author, and the creator of the Nourish to Flourish Academy, and I am obsessed with all things manifestation and mindset. I'm passionate about helping you nourish your life so you can create a life you love. If you're looking for a weekly dose of empowerment to create a better version of you and enhance your life in the areas of business, finances, relationships, and health, then you're in the right place. If you enjoy hearing about topics like mindset, health, wealth, optimism, manifestation, thoughts, gratitude, and the law of attraction, you are in the right place. Think of this podcast as your weekly dose of positivity and inspiration. Thank you for being here today. So now let's get started. So we're going to talk today about the 77 day nourish challenge. You might be wondering what the heck this thing is all about, right? Well, first of all, I want to talk about where I came up with the idea for the challenge. I had been hearing a lot about this challenge called the 75 Hard by Andy Frisella. And it was all about not making excuses, squashing your inner voice, getting uncomfortable with being or getting comfortable with being uncomfortable, which is something I totally believe in you know, gaining more confidence, gaining more self-esteem, being resilient, having perseverance and pushing back past comfort in order to do something good in your life. And I thought, hey, I might check out this challenge. So I looked into it a little bit more and it had five components. And I thought, hmm, maybe I could do this. I don't know. So the first component was diet, but it didn't really give you any type of diet to to do. It didn't dictate any particular diet, but it did say you had to have zero deviation. And the first thing, when I thought about this, I thought, well, this isn't really that great of a thing for somebody who's not a nutritionist or a dietitian who doesn't have too much experience with dieting or with nutrition. And by the way, I don't believe he is a nutritionist or a dietitian. So that was one thing that I thought, hmm, I kind of want to change that and, and have a particular type of plan to be doing. But one thing he did say was how you relate to food is fundamental and that fundamental on how you relate to life, which I do agree with that. And really cultivating um, nourishing habits and disciplines is a good thing to do in your life. So doing what nourishes you is really what's the right thing to do. And I get what he's saying, you know, does it nourish you to have a piece of cake? But I just think maybe there should be a little bit more guidance and it shouldn't just be any diet because I could just see people going off on any kind of crazy diet. The second part of his challenge was working out twice a day for 45 minutes. And I thought, holy crap, that is just way too much. And for one thing, the first thing I thought of is that much working out is going to cause inflammation. And inflammation is no bueno, especially now when we have things going on in the world where we really want to have our immune systems the best they can be. I really wouldn't recommend going hardcore on a workout twice a day for 45 minutes. It's much better to do something more sustainable. So we're going to talk a little bit. First, I'm going to tell you about what I came up with uh, looking at other people's plans and how I came up with the nourish plan after that. So that was his workout twice a day for 45 minutes. A gallon of water was his third thing. Read 10 pages of self-improvement book and take a picture every day. So that was the challenge. But the thing about it was, it was for 75 days. If you quit, you had to start over. So if you were a quitter, if you quit. And if you guys know anything about me, quitting is, and I could see where a lot of people would quit. He actually said a lot of people would probably quit, that probably only 10% of the people would end up completing it. I thought, heck, that is not the kind of challenge I want to do. I want to have something challenging yet doable. And I want, pe- I want to be able to complete it. And I want people to be able to complete it. So the other thing was, he called it a mental toughness program, not a fitness program, which I agree. It, it, it does seem to be more of a mental toughness. But I believe more in nourishing yourself to get to your goals. You don't have to hustle You don't have to kill yourself to get to your goal. So that was one of the problems that I had with that. Then I was also at the same time 
reading a book called The Miracle Morning. And he, it was a morning ritual or morning routine. And the name of that author was Hal Elrod. And he talked about the things to do every morning, which was the savor, silence, affirmations, visualization, exercise, and reading. Hey, I'm into all of those. And I did incorporate that into the 77 Day Nourish. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. But that was where part of my inspiration was from that book as well. Then at the same time, I was reading a book called The 5 a.m. Club by Robert Sharma. And he basically says, get up at 5 a.m. because it, it helps you to be more creative. And he has what he calls the 20-20-20, which is 20 minutes of movement, 20 minutes of of reflection and 20 minutes of grow, which I like this idea as well too. And why exercise? He talks about, and I totally agree with this, exercise gives you a hit of dopamine. It reduces your cortisol, it releases serotonin, gives you a great jump start to your metabolism if you do it first thing in the morning, and it's going to alter your mood. And guess what? I have really noticed that in doing this challenge so far. And then his second part was reflect. And he said, write in your journal, silence, affirmations, visualization, do goals. He didn't really give a concrete thing. He said those were the kind of things that you could do for 20 minutes. And then the next part of his was grow, 20 minutes of grow, which was read or listen to a podcast or listen to an audio book, some kind of education. And he calls this the victory hour. So... I decided to come up with my own challenge, and I think many of you may like my challenge more. One of the things, let me talk, okay, so the first challenge was 75 days. The second one said 30 days. The Miracle Morning said 30 days to create this habit. And then the last one, Robert Sharma, says 66 days. So his was a 66-day challenge. I decided to make mine 77 days because... In my research, I have seen that habits can take anywhere from 18 to 254 days to form. But a 254-day challenge is not going to be anything anybody is going to want to sign up for. And it really depends on a lot of factors how long these habits will take to form. So that's basically what my challenge is about, is having is forming lifelong habits that you can have for the rest of your life that are going to make you into a better person and more able to reach your goals, right, and nourish you. So... A lot of why it takes a little bit of time to change a habit is because we have old programming in our minds, right? We have daily habits. We have things we've been doing, depending on how old you are, you might have been doing it for 20 years, 30 years, 10 years, who knows? So like I said, he takes it, he says it takes, Sharma says it takes 66 days to automate till it becomes easy. And he says in the beginning, it's hard, the middle, it's messy. And at the end, it's gorgeous. And I kind of liken this to, I liken all habits, and I say this a lot, to a truck on a track, a big semi-truck rolling down a dirt road, and it's kept rolling down it and rolling down it for many, many years. So the tire tracks are deeply embedded in the dirt. So how hard is it going to be to break that pattern? That's what a habit is. So the first thing is getting rid of the old routine. So you're going to have to break out of the pattern, right? You're going to have to break out and up and over and out of that pattern, right? Then the second part is installing those new habits. So that's when you're going to be over the bump turning. Instead of going through the same road, you're going to be going down a new road. And that's going to be a little bit messy, right? Sometimes the truck won't quite make it. It'll go back off, back onto the path. And then you'll have to try and get back off and onto your new path again. But then in the end, the metaphor of the truck, it's going to be smooth sailing along in a new path, a new path in the dirt, that is going to be really easy to do just like the old habit was. So that is the whole theory behind habits. And that's why it's hard in the beginning, messy in the middle, because you're going to want to be knocked back into your old patterns. And then gorgeous, of course, in the end, because you've been able to change some habits in your life to get to a place where you want to be. So let me tell you what the 77 Day Nurse Challenge is all about and what it what the components of the challenge are. The first component is the Nourish Morning Ritual. The second component is the Nourish Nutrition. And the third component is the Nourish Self Care. And then I also have a bonus component. So with the very first component, the Nourish Ritual, what we're going to do is get up at 5 a.m., Because when you get up at 5 a.m., you have time to spend 
quiet time alone to get these things done, to not be interrupted by your kids, your family, the phone, whoever. So you're going to get up at 5 a.m. Then you're going to have eight ounces of water. Why water first off? First of all, think about it. You haven't had any water for what? Eight hours? Depends. Nine hours? Ten hours? Your body needs hydration. And then the second part of the morning routine is going to be take a photo. Now, you don't have to take a photo, but I thought that was a good idea. So that's not actually a part of the actual 77 Day Nourish uh, challenge, but it's something that I'm doing for my part of it. The third part of the morning ritual is 20 to 30 minutes of movement, a workout, some kind of workout where you're going to sweat. And here I am going to be a little more lenient. Um, I used to do CrossFit, so I know how intense it is. And in the 75 day hard, they talk, I mean, I think they're really a lot about hard, hardcore working out and CrossFit, etc. I mean, if you want to do CrossFit, do it. If you only if you know what you're doing, though. So pick workouts that you know what you're doing that are at your level. That's one of the reasons I wanted to change it from 45 minutes twice a day to 20 to 30 minutes every single day. And then the bonus is actually adding in extra workouts three times a week if you want to. So it's it's 20 to 30 minutes of exercise that you must do. If you want to do more, feel free to do an hour. You know, you can walk if you want to walk. You can do yoga if you want to do yoga. But of course, be careful. Make sure you're, you're doing something you know what you're doing. You can watch lots of videos on YouTube has videos on yoga. You can do weights. You could do CrossFit. You could run. You could do treadmill, you could do Zumba, whatever you want to do, 20 to 30 minutes of movement. First thing, get that serotonin going, get that dopamine going. I swear to you, you will feel better. A trick that I found that has been working for me is, I don't do this every night, but probably about half the time, I literally wear my workout clothes to bed. It makes it a lot easier to get up and get going. So workout first thing. I don't even have a cup of coffee. I just have my glass of water straight in to work out. Then the second thing is we're going to nourish our spirit. And what we're going to do for the next 20, about 20 minutes is first meditate. I actually meditate for 15 to 20 minutes. Then affirmations, journaling, gratitude, and visualization. Now, these are the things that are going to really help you to up-level your life and manifest the things you want out of your life. And this is one of the reasons why I changed up the program, because I didn't see too much of this in any of the programs. I did see it in the Miracle Morning program, but it wasn't combined with the rest of the things. So you're going to do your meditation. If you want to do a guided meditation, if you want to listen to meditation music, if you want to just sit in silence, you know, I do 20 minutes. I would do somewhere from 10 to 20 minutes. Then you're going to do your affirmations. And your affirmations are statements about, positive statements about your life, positive statements about yourself. I am healthy. I am a money magnet, I'm wealthy, whatever they are. So you're going to do about five to 10 of those. And what I do is I write them down every day and I change them up as I go along. And then I also say them out loud and you do need to say them out loud. Another thing about the affirmations while you're doing the 77 days or while I'm doing the 77 days, I suggest putting them on post-it notes and putting them around your house, you know, on your refrigerator your mirror, your car, wherever. The next thing is journaling, and I'm using some journal prompts that that I developed called the Nourish Journaling Prompts. So basically, I'm just taking one of the prompts every day and journaling. It might be, what's your perfect life? Where do you see yourself in five years? But the whole concept of journaling is, is either to let go of something that's bugging you or to make yourself feel good by looking at something that makes you feel good or about visualizing to the future. So those are usually why we want to journal. And I know I talked about this before. When I was probably in my 20s in college, (laughs) I used to keep a journal and I took them out the other day and took a look at them. I mostly complained (laughs) in my journals back then. I'd say, oh, I met this boy and this happened. Oh, I met this. Oh my goodness, I didn't get a good grade, blah, blah, blah. I did have some other, you know, loving things in there as well. But I noticed that I seemed to just pick up my journal when I wanted to complain about something. And that's fine to get out those types of emotions. But the purpose for the journal in the 77 Day Nourish is to up-level yourself and up-level your mood and your vibration. So you want to be journaling about things that are either working through to get over something, journaling about things 
that make you feel good or journaling about things that are going to make you visualize towards the future. Then the next step is writing down what you're grateful for. Can't say enough about gratitude. It only takes a few minutes to jot down what you're grateful for because we really need to remember what we're grateful for. And that's another thing that's going to help us raise our vibe. And there's nothing better than starting the day off with what you're grateful for. Maybe you're grateful for your health. Maybe you're grateful for your family. Maybe you're not having such a great day, but you probably are after you worked out. So that's one thing about this I'm noticing too. Maybe you're grateful for coffee because it's so early in the morning, but just jot down five to 10 things you're grateful for. And then visualization is the next step to that spirit part of the Nourish Morning Ritual. Either sit there quietly and just visualize in your mind if you're able to do that. Not everybody can do that. Or have a vision board that you can look at that has images that help you visualize what you want in the future. And you want to be really specific about what you want because as you know, what you think about is what you get. And that's what a lot of this Nourish Challenge is about is thinking about things that are going to be more in alignment with the things that you really want. And that is the whole point of this spirit part of the Nourish Morning Ritual. Then the next part of the Nourish Morning Ritual is the mind part. So the the Nourish Morning Ritual is about nourishing your body, mind, and spirit. So we've talked about the body with movement and exercise and water. And we've talked about the spirit with the meditation, affirmations, journaling, gratitude, and visualization. And then the mind is going to be where you are going to take the time to learn something new. And I am with the 75 hard challenge Andy for Sally with reading. I believe that reading does something different for you than listening to a podcast or listening to something. So what I'm doing is reading for 15 to 20 minutes a day and I'm reading a self-improvement type of book, whether it be a personal self-improvement type of book or a business self-improvement type of book. This is going to be your learning hour, and like Robin Sharma says, is where you're going to grow and learn things. And I've already read several books, and I'm only on day 18 of doing this challenge for myself. So that is the Nourish Morning Ritual, which is the first part of the 77-Day Nourish Challenge. Then what I've added in is on work days, I'm doing something, I'm doing taking about 5 to 10 minutes a day to plan, and then... One of the things that I learned from Robin Sharma also is to do the 90-day focus burst. And that means I'm working on my most important thing of the day for 90 minutes first thing while you're fresh. So whatever's the most important in your day, work on that first. Then the other tip is work in 60-minute intervals taking 10-minute breaks. And I like to take a nourish break, not just a break, but get up, get up, get out of your chair, go outside in nature, maybe listen to some calm music, maybe read a little bit more, you know, maybe do something, anything that kind of nourishes you. I like to go outside and water my plants. I have a lot of plants in my yard. So that's how I take my 10 minute nourish break. But on my work days, I'll do 90 minute of focus burst and then work in 60 minute intervals with 10 minute breaks to be the most productive. So that is the first part of the 77 day nourish challenge which is the nourish morning ritual and what I'm going to do here is give a specific type of nutrition program that I like to follow um one of the criticisms I saw of the 77 day hard was there was no specific information like I said and I actually am a holistic um health counselor and a level one precision nutrition a certified coach So what I chose to do, and I think it's a really good way to eat, is the precision nutrition style of eating. And I'm just doing the basic style here for the challenge, but there are ways to up-level it if you're an athlete, depending on whether you're an endomorph, ectomorph, mesomorph, and kind of switching around the portion sizes. But basically, for the challenge... What you're going to do, and they also tell you to eat six meals a day. That's up to you. I'm good with three meals a day and one or two snacks, whatever works for you. I'm usually a three meal a day, one snack person. Maybe you need three snacks. Maybe you need two. But I do really recommend the three meals. Um, 
or, but that's what I'm recommending for this. So basically with the precision nutrition plan, you're going to eat a protein for women that is the size of the palm of your hand for men two two palms of a hand for your size of your protein. Then you're going to eat a vegetable, which is the size of your fist for women, for men, two fists. And then you're also going to add into that vegetables. I mean, I just said vegetables. You're also going to add into that to a carb, which is the size of your cupped hand for women and two for men. And then fats would be the size of the tip of your thumb. So I'm also really trying to advocate getting whole foods in and uh, superfoods. And superfoods are things, you know, like salmon and nuts and olive oil and, and things like that. But I'm not saying that you have to eat so many superfoods per day because this whole thing for me is about progress, not perfection. Whereas I believe, especially the 70, 75 day um, or 75 hard is more about perfection. And you know what? Perfection is the root of all evil to me. So, I mean, nobody's perfect. So I'm more looking at what we can do to have progress. So that's why, okay, so you have a piece of meat. You have a piece of chicken. You have a bowl of broccoli. And then maybe you have some rice with that. And then you add in some avocado. So if you just think of those four components in your diet every time you eat especially for your three meals, that's, that's the plan. And then I've also added in because I think it's nearly impossible. And he uh, is all about, yes, if you cheat at all, if you have one bad thing, you, you have to go back and start over. I just think that is not good for the psyche. And I don't think it's, it's leading to progress. I think it's leading to maybe not feeling good about yourself Also, um, I'm adding in one, I'm calling it a fun meal, one fun meal a week. And I don't say go crazy, just one meal. You know, if you want to have tacos at the taco place one time, or you want to have, I don't know, whatever your thing is, have the one fun meal, you know, not more than 750 calories or 800 calories per meal. So that's pretty much the nutrition part of it. But then I've also added in one gallon of water because hydrating is so important and most people are not hydrated, especially if you're working out and you're working out a little bit more than you're used to working out. It's a good idea to hydrate. So I'm advocating for one gallon of water a day. And then lastly, for that second portion of the 77 day nourish challenges, zero alcohol which is what the 77 day hard says as well. And I have a lot of reasons for saying no alcohol. Try it out. Just try no alcohol for 77 days. If you're getting up at 5 a.m., it's going to be really difficult to have any alcohol anyway. So I'm advocating for this challenge. It's no alcohol at all for 77 days. I'm going to do a whole nother podcast at one point on alcohol. I have a chapter in my book called Wine, Friend, or Foe. So that kind of gives you an idea of what I think about alcohol, I guess, or does it? I don't know. But anyway, so that's the second part of it is the nutrition. So three meals, the precision nutrition style, protein, carb, veggie, fat with each meal, one to two snacks, one fun meal a a week. Try to get in superfoods like salmon and spinach and cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and berries and eggs and whole grains and avocados and flax seeds, olive oil and nuts and things like that. And then zero alcohol. So that's the second part. Oh, and a gallon of water. The third part of the nourish challenge is to do three nourishing self-care activities a week. And a self-care activity could be something like a detox bath dry brushing, a massage, a mani-pedi, which you really can't get right now if you're in California especially, a facial, a ma- you know, a mask, something like that, a detox foot bath, a nap. So that has been my go-to self-care since getting up at 5 a.m. Haven't really quite mastered getting enough sleep at 5 a.m. yet, so nap has become one of my go-to self-care ideas. Um... About a year ago, I did a 21-day Nourish Yourself Challenge, and that was 21 days of nourishing yourself morning, noon, and night. And some of the ideas on here 
are some of the ideas that you could do for your self-care. For example, um, unplug, take a night off from all technology, drink a cup of herbal tea, take a detox bath, read a book for pleasure, go on a walk in nature, buy a bouquet of flowers, notice what you see, actually be present. There's so many ideas of things you can do for self-care. So three times a week, doing something to nourish yourself through self-care is the third part or the third leg of the 77-Day Nourish Challenge. And then what I've done is also added in a fourth component, which is a bonus, because if you want to work out more, three days a week of another workout, whether it be walking, after you did weights in the morning or doing yoga or, you know, doing your CrossFit three days a week, whatever it is, that's up to you. That's the bonus. So the components of the 77 Day Nourish Challenge, again, are the Nourish Morning Ritual, which is going to nourish your body, mind, and spirit. On the work days, planning, doing the Focus 90 and, take, and doing the 60-10 work schedule. And then the second component is the Nourish Nutrition, which is following the Precision Nutrition Plan, one fun meal a week, trying to get as many superfoods in as possible, zero alcohol, and a gallon of water a day, plus that eight ounces first thing in the morning. And then the third component is the self-care. And the whole point of all this is to raise our vibe so we can manifest what we want into our lives. So that's what the 77 Day Nourish Challenge is all about. And I am actually today on day 19. So I have quite a few more days to to go. And I'm testing this out for all of you to see how it works. So far, so good. And I did put a lot of thought into this, what I thought would be the best things in order to really nourish yourself, make you feel good about yourself. I'm still looking and aiming for the same outlook or the same outcomes as the 77 or 75 day hard. I want people to be more self-empowered, to have more self-esteem, to really feel better about themselves, you know, and to be able to do something that's sustainable rather than something that you can't work out for 45 minutes twice a day for the rest of your life, but you can probably get up at 5 a.m. and work out for 20 minutes and do the nourish morning ritual for the rest of your life. So basically, that is the 77-Day Nourish Challenge. And the whole point of it is to become more confident, to get more self-esteem, to really help you get into a better vibe. And, you know, nourishing yourself is going to put you in a better vibration. And when you're in a better vibration, you are going to be able to manifest the things that you want into your life. So that was... Episode number 12 of the Nourish to Flourish podcast, all about the 77 day nourish challenge. So let me know what you think. And the best thing you can do is let other people know about my podcast. Let other people know. Okay. That's it for this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. If you loved what you heard, please let me know. If you aren't already following me on social media, follow me to get a daily dose of nourishment on Instagram at Suzanne Jezek Ariaga and on Facebook or on my website, www.suzannejezekariaga.com. If you want to get more information, On the courses in the Nourish to Flourish Academy, go to www.nourishtoflourishacademy.com.